What time is it? You know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. And it's time to find my Instagram. That's Geekly Amanda. G-E-E-K-L-Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. So make sure to follow me there too. It's time to get this video started because it's going to be an interesting one. Yesterday, did I rile up some feathers, got some panties and a bunch in Twitter. And, all right, I'm not 100% innocent in this because I feel like I made a few mistakes on my assessment of things, and we'll discuss that. But first, let me tell you, like, what the tweet was about. So the Ukraine-Russia, you know, war conflict yesterday, they had, what, the UN meeting, right? And they had uh, the vote for condemning Russia condemning them for the invasion of Ukraine and all that and we had they all the countries voted and there was not many surprises I mean who voted with Russia Belarus well of course Belarus is over there uh, helping them right they're even reporting that Belarus is sending in troops to Ukraine with Russia they're supporting Russia's troops over there all that so this is not it uh, was not a surprise North Korea also voted with them which I mean, Kim Jong-un, another dictator. These are all nice surprises. They did have, you know, some people that abstained, took a neutral a neutral approach, China, which was a little surprise with that. I actually thought China might vote with Russia because even the President Xi has come out and said, like, Putin's his best friend. They're not, you know, voting with Russia on this. So I'm like, maybe, you know, that's a good sign because I actually expected him to vote with Russia. But one thing I was surprised about, I was like, my my people, they uh, over in India, voted to take a neutral stance, and this confused me. I wanted to know why. I wanted to know more. I wanted to start a discussion. So I went to Twitter. Wrong place. I should have came to my people over here to start the discussion. And re you know me, I want to understand why. So I went to Twitter, which probably isn't the best place because all the Twitter trolls and people <laughs> over there. I should have just came here to discuss these issues with my people. But this was my tweet, okay? Because I was confused. I really wanted to know. I was like, I don't understand why, why India, which I mean is the world's largest democracy, is voting for like anti-democracy and unrighteousness at that UN general meeting. Like I was like, it's not very hard. All you have to do is like, condemn war I, I that's that's these are my thought process I'm like what's so wrong about condemning war <laughs> you know I condemn war anybody in my own country went to war many times and I was like oh no I condemned it right away so I went on I was like I get it you know people I've heard it you know oh Russia's been India's longtime friend and helped them and all this and I was like but even in the Mahabharata, right? Even Mahabharata, when Karn sticked with his friend, even though his friend was unrighteous, he stick by him and loyal, and it led him to fight and right in the Mahabharata. Like it led him to the big fight, and he had to fight against Krishna and, and all this stuff. So I'm like, I don't understand. Now I made some mistakes in this tweet. I did. But the first being, and one, uh, person in the comments pointed out, which I 100% agree with. And I was like, you know, valid point. You're 100% right. That I did, you know, had the wrong analogy when it came to, you know, who India was compared to one of the people in the Mahabharata. I compared to Karn, which Karn took the side. But in this case, India did not take a side. They remained neutral. So I, I, I think I was wrong in, in comparing make another video though, that's comparing you know, people in the Mahabharata to some of the crisis going on now. So I will get more into that in my next video. Check thing it out. that it was really pointing out, and this is why I wanted to tweet, I wanted to learn why India went neutral. And many pointed out, you know, things like, you know, Russia's the longtime friend, I get that and all, but most importantly, you know, Russia is one of the countries that now sell India like a lot of their weapons and weaponry, like 70% of it. And parts like they they were saying if like some of these weapons needed things they have to go to russia for the parts and if russia isn't giving them these parts they, these weapons aren't any good so i'm like oh i get it i get it like you know india is very dependent on protection and their military equipment from russia in that case i mean 
I 100% understand. I 100%. And then I came upon a bunch of people that seem like, you know, they so using the hashtag. You have, The hashtag trended on, I stand with Putin. And I'm like, how? Why? Is there something I'm missing? I don't understand how people can stand with Putin and really blame in the U.S. a lot for this war. I'm like, here we go. <laughs> here we go. For weeks, Biden was on TV telling us day to day what's going on, trying to warn the world. They're like, during the Olympics, he's like, look, look, we received all this intelligence. Russia has surrounded the Ukraine with troops. He put them in Belarus. It's all over to Russia and they're surrounding. He, he's doing this. He's got troops here and there. We're receiving stuff that he plans to invade. He, the, the part on the West he said is theirs and he's taken that. And even Biden came online and was like, and we received intelligence that he's going to invade the capital and, real, and they think take over the whole country. People laughed. People were like, oh, there's Biden. Stars, oh, look at him on TV. And then, you know, it, it wasn't happening. Where's the attack? Oh, was that? And Russia the whole time lying. Oh, we're just testing. We're just testing, doing military tests, and people laugh. Oh, they're just testing. Nobody was believing. I believed him. <laughs> I believed him. I was like, Biden was calling, like, ordering Americans out of Ukraine. I was like, oh, this ain't, this is real. People still laughing. I'm like, people need to pay attention. This and is real. The, the most horrible thing came true. The whole most horrible thing, and, and we actually watching what's happening now. They're going to blame Biden for, like, instigating that. When he was trying to warn the world of what Putin's but doing. I understand a lot of the commenters was like, well, U.S. don't have room to talk. Look at their history. Look at their history of bombings and, and attacking cities in Iraq when, oh yeah, you said there was wars of mass destruction and they went in there and attacked and got the U.N. behind them and then they couldn't find nothing. I was like, I, I was with you. <laughs> Look, I'm like, I'm with you on this. I'm against wars. You know, Afghanistan, Iraq. Oh no, I was... I, I was, don't go. No, don't, no war. President Bush released a statement on uh, on the Ukraine conflict. So let's watch this. I was watching this on John Oliver of this statement. Y'all ready to watch this together? Let's go. I join the international community in this condemning Bush Putin's said. unprovoked and unjustified invasion of Ukraine. And hold Bush. on, George, not from you. Right? You are not the guy for this one, because that statement only would have made sense if it ended with, oh shit, now I hear it. Sorry, I'll <laughs> Because up. Bush invaded the Iraq. I mean, we get it. We're like, even when I saw Bush release a statement, I was like, Bush, take a seat. <laughs> Bush, you really have no say in this right now. Take a seat with you descending in the troops, invading countries. No, no, we don't want to hear it. So I understand people coming and be like, well, U.S. ain't got no room to talk. I, I agree with this. But just because of America's mistakes in the past doesn't give Putin a right to be a madman now, to be a murderer, to be a war criminal, invading this country, invading Ukraine, because why? Many people were saying, well, they want to, you know, you the West is pushing Ukraine into joining NATO and Putin saying no. And, you know, do, you don't want NATO at your doorstep. I was like, first of all, first of all, U.S. has done Ukraine really wrong in this, especially with the last president, Trump. He was impeached for this Ukraine stuff. He was impeached because the Zelensky, you know, called him up, we wanted to like buy weapons from the U.S. and all this, and it was approved by our Congress to protect themselves, and Trump was withholding it. Trump was withholding it. This Trump was saying, this wouldn't happen under me. And we know this Trump, it wouldn't have happened under you. Because under you, you did whatever Putin wanted. You withheld the weapons from the Ukraine. You, you know, pulled out of like Syria because he wanted to. You pulled out, like you were already, you were, the NATO, NATO, like you, if he would have been reelected, he already kind of said he would have, you know, uh, dis, disinvolved NATO. Like U.S. would not be in NATO anymore. He, he already pulled out of that one treaty, the open, what is it called? Open skies when, you know, when in wartime or conflicts, they have a period of like no bombing for civilians to help. He pulled out of that. R Russia did too, right behind him because 
Trump was Putin's puppet. <laughs> he did whatever he wanted. It has many tricks up his sleeve. One is spreading like the false information. And Biden was right behind it. He was like, Putin's planning on spreading false information, saying this and that, that Ukraine's this and that. And and he already started. Look what, look, here's a video where they talked about, you know, Putin saying that Zelensky was a Nazi. That was like one of the first things he's been playing. Zelensky's a Nazi. We're going to start the, we're going to stop the Nazism. Let's watch this together. Ready? Go. You may have heard Putin frame the invasion as the denazification of Ukraine and right. thought, hold on, that's a very weird thing to say, but he's been making that bullshit case for years now, <coughs> despite the fact Ukraine's current president is both Jewish, Jewish and had family members die in the Holocaust. But he's a Nazi. And I don't want to play who's the biggest Nazi here, mm -hmm. that after all is what Twitter is for. But between <laughs> I know that. Zelensky and Putin, if you are looking for who is more like Hitler, I'm just going to go with the ethno-nationalist despot invading sovereign European territory, and it was also a terrible fucking painter. <laughs> All of that. He, he really went to the throat on that. Doggedly week. pursued this and has not seemed to want to hear any arguments against it. It's funny that the John, that was John Oliver would even want to bring up, you know, saying Putin doesn't want to hear any arguments against it. He doesn't because before this was happened, when he talked to his national security politicians team and stuff, they had one guy that kind of questioned Putin. Uh, on his team. Let's set, let's watch this together because this is the guy who questioned Putin and look what Putin did. Ready? Go. They had the subtitles. He's like, but he was like, Western, let's give him one, light, one chance so we can, what do you say? Make the decision. Where he wanted to like be diplomatic. He said, let's talk to him, right? And look at Putin said. What do you mean? What do you suggest in negotiations? He's like, that's what Putin's like. You suggest in negotiations? And he's like, uh, look how scary is. It's like, do you or do you not support? So I'm, I'm supporting, I'm supporting. So we're talking about recognizing independence or not. That's what we said. We're not talking about, we're talking about... I support to recognize the independence. I mean, not even only his, you know, political people are afraid to like come out against him, but in Russia, it's kind of like, you know, to speak against the government, that's like a, you don't do that. You go and protest, you're going to get arrested, right? You're going to get arrested. You don't, you don't protest against the Russian government. Well, when this started, look, look at this, right? Look, go. Look at that. Look at the people in the streets of Russia and St. Petersburg and stuff protesting against what's going on, being arrested. And they've like, you know, asked people on the streets of these protests, like, do they support this? Do they support the war? Why? Why shouldn't they, you know, invade Ukraine? And you got to think. I mean, yes, Ukraine was part of the, of you know, the, the USSR. They were part of it. They, you know, it's, you know, broke off, but still russians they they talked about having family members there loved ones friends that are ukrainian that you're going to attack of course I, they're not agreeing with this let's watch this when they ask some of the people at the protest y'all ready go it hurts because it's for our friends our relatives i'm sorry so shocked <laughs> i just can't help crying <laughs> I think that most of Russians don't support this. It's horrible. I feel sorry for people there. I feel sorry for us. I don't like it and I don't want it to be like that at all. Do you know people in Ukraine? Yep, I'm actually in love with one. So, I don't, I don't know what to say. It's a tragedy. Her boyfriend, fiat love, is Ukrainian and over there. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh, don't. I've spent so many tears on this like this past week just thinking of, you know, the people affected by this. And yeah, US has put sanctions on them, you know, the Russians and and it breaks my heart because these sanctions, I mean, Putin's prepared for this. He stockpiled his money and all this stuff, but this is going to hurt these 
people that don't they are that don't want this and they have taken some polls and people don't trust polls and stuff but they said like less like some of these polls saying like it was like less than eight or less than 10 percent of russians were actually for this less than 10 percent over 90 percent of the country is against this and i can see why they you know they look at ukraine as their brothers and their sisters family fighting each other on different sides that's what this is like that's kind of like at the same position that's why mahar bahar came to mind Even other Ma russian leaders around the world have no words for this like they don't know what to say you know they have russian ambassadors in other parts of the country uh, or other not other countries and and uh they don't even know what to say with this they don't there was this one news uh story where it was in ireland that's what it is in ireland asking like the ambassador of russia in ireland you know his thoughts on this and and questioning him let's take a look at this together you all ready let's go it's not our choice this is the russian the bear it's not our choice the the, the uh, military option is not our choice and we did but not sir, want you, to... your forces have invaded a sovereign nation it absolutely was your choice yeah well it, it was not our preferable choice why preferable should our choice. government entertain your presence here when you are acting as an apologist for slaughter well it's a it's a good question a good question uh, you might ask, is it a good question uh, that, uh, uh, your government it's up to them ask them your government why are you letting us stay here that's what he's saying it's a good question we're slaughtering these people you ask them why you're letting us still stay here they don't even know what to say because there is no excuse for this there is none you can't you know back russia on this there it's it makes no sense the excuses they do give that putin tries to give the misinformation we know it's bs we know it's BS. Yesterday during my tweet, some people were like, well, look, look what right now, Russia says that Ukraine has hostages, has in, host, you know, Indian, Indian students who are hostages they're using as shields. Went and called it and said that and it was announced. And then today I wake up and I'm like, people were bringing that up. I'm like, you can't trust Putin. How are you trusting Putin? He's the biggest misinformation man around. And I woke up this morning and in, in the stories, I'm like, I looked it up and they were like, we can't find any evidence of this. Of course not. Watch this with me. Watch this. His disinformation that he sends around. Go. On February 18th, pro-Russian separatists released a video purporting to show a gun battle in a forest. ABC News confirms the video file appears to have been created on February 8th. That's 10 days earlier than the alleged attack. Further analysis by ABC News and Bellingcat indicate that some of the explosions in the video were actually taken from a 2010 Finnish Defense Forces training video. So he's sending out videos that were pre-recorded, pre-recorded footage, pre-recorded footage to try to be like, look what's happening. And they're fake. I admit, I got a lot of stuff wrong in my tweet, you know, comparing it. I wanted to open up the discussions. That's why I said that. But there's one thing I'm not wrong on this. There's one thing I'm not wrong. And it's that Putin is a madman. He is a murderer. He is, you know, coming to this country, killing these citizens, killing these innocent people. Just because what he wants is, you know, to re to, you know, make the USSR to get all the countries again to, you know, reunite the USSR. This country doesn't want to be united with Russia. This country wants to be free. Let them be free. Go home. These Ukrainian people have shown they have some courage. They have some bravery and some big balls. <laughs> Let's end it with this, this video. From this, it was look like an old woman with the Russian troops right there holding the guns, you know, and 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 trying to you know take over this her her homeland. And this lady goes up to these Russian soldiers and hands them sunflower seeds. Take a look at this. I don't know if y'all saw the video. Ready? Go. There are deep signs of defiance. <laughs> people who are unwilling to yield. This woman confronted heavily armed Russian soldiers. She's like, you're occupiers. You come on our soil. Why'd you come here with your guns? She said, take these seeds so that at least sunflowers will grow when you die. 
take these seeds. Uh, so apparently sunflowers are the national flower of Ukraine. That's their flower. And she's like, take these seeds, soldiers, so that when you die, our sunflowers will grow. Ukrainian is fighting with seeds in their pockets. Ukraine's fighting back and they they have their weaponry and, and, and the Zelensky, I mean, he's came out one of the bravest people. Even U.S. was like, we'll get you out. And he's like, I need, you know, weapons. I need ammunition. I don't need a ride. They're standing there. They're, they're fighting for their freedom. You know, U.S. is afraid to, uh, you know, uh, partly afraid to have them join NATO, NATO because U.S. don't want no war with Russia. The U.S. does, I'm telling you now, look at Biden saying, he's told us from the beginning, we were, like, before Russia attacked when he was one in the world, he's like, we are not going to fight, you know, with Ukraine on this. We're not going to put our troops in this. This is like the highest power nuclear weapon country and and you want the U.S. the second highest power to fight against this nuclear power country? Can you imagine? U.S. don't want that. The U.S. don't want to fight Russia. I'm going to end it with this. You know, uh, great scientist that I admire, uh, Albert Einstein. He, you know, he was once asked by someone, you know, what kind of weapons they, he thought that if they had a third world war, what kind of weapons would be fought in it? And his reply was this. He said, I don't know what weapons the Third World War will be fought with, but I know the Fourth War, the World War, will be fought with stick and st sticks and stones. We have to do everything in our power to try to just bring peace to this situation. You know, try to bring peace because there's no winners in this. There's no winners in this. Everyone will lose.